Well, hey, my friends, I'm so glad that you're with me on another edition of the Thriving Christian Artist Podcast. Super excited to have a new friend, but who already feels like an old friend, Amy Rylander here, who is not only an incredible artist, but a leader in the body of Christ and has a real heart like I do for healing and identity and wholeness and just walking in who Jesus created you to be. So, Amy, I'm super excited that that you're here. I don't know if we can keep this to, to under an hour, but we're going to try our best anyway. So, <laughs> welcome. Thank you so much. It's so nice to finally connect with you, and I'm I'm just thrilled to be on here. Absolutely. So, for those folks that are just kind of getting to know you and that sort of thing, who are you, where are you from, what do you do in a nutshell, and then we'll kind of jump into a little bit of your story. Well, my name is Amy Rylander. My husband and I, uh, Donald, we lead a church in uh, Jackson, Mississippi called We Are One, and I am a prophetic artist. I've been a prophetic artist since 2004, so uh, I started before I knew what that was. (laughs) I was talking to somebody the other day, I said, and trying to remember kind of the first time I even heard that phrase, and I think it was around 99, 2000 from Janice Van Cronkite, which I don't know if you know that name at all, but um, she was in Atlanta. We were in Atlanta in similar churches, and I saw her painting on stage uh, at a Bobby Connor meeting, and I was like, what is that? Like, that is so cool. I didn't know you could <laughs> you could do that. So, when, so were you always an artist, and then you just, how did that, you know, awaken for you, and how did, how did you start realizing that, that God wanted to use you in that way? Well, I was always creative. I always, I was very loved to do crafts and, and things like that. Growing up when I was younger, I was very creative, but uh, you know, I got married very young and I had three, three amazing boys and I was a homeschool mom. And so really I was just focused on, you know, serving in my church and serving the Lord. Uh, And then in 2004, I just, just felt like, man, I really would love to paint. I wanted something just for me, you know, just to have a release an outlet. And so um, I got some paints and some canvas for Mother's Day. And when I sat down to do my first piece, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, Amy, I gifted you to use it for me. Mm. And of course, at that time, I had no grid. I didn't know what that meant. I thought, oh, he wants me to just bless his people. So yeah. I would just paint, you know, still lifes or whatever, and just give them away. And I did that for, for a couple of years. And, uh, and then 2000, Five two thousand six, uh, the Lord had me get pull my stuff out one night. It was like midnight, and the Lord's like, "I want you to, I want you to paint." So I was like, "Okay." So I got everybody's in bed. You know, the house is quiet. I got my stuff out, and the Lord said, "I want you to paint the Holy Spirit." Wow. And I was like, what? <laughs> no pressure, right? <laughs> what, is, what does the Holy Spirit look like? I don't know. And so he just showed me a very simple two-dimensional image uh, of a vessel with water coming out and kind of swirling out. And I was like, okay. So I painted that. And, uh, and then he just said, from now on, you're going to paint for me what I show you. And wow. so I haven't done any still life since then. So it was like, you're done with that. Now you're on to this. And so it's kind of just been a journey over the That's- years. and. It's been really fun. That is so awesome. I'm I'm thinking, and, and this may be a loaded question because having been in ministry and and also an artist and not understanding how those two things worked for many, many, many years, I would just love to kind of hear a little bit of the, I'm sure, struggle or tension maybe in your life of I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm in ministry, we're serving, we're serving other people. How can I focus on this art thing over here when it seems so extra to so so many people. Like, what does this have to do with the kingdom and and all that? Did you go through that and and, and have a little struggle with that? And because I sure I, did, I, and did. I know a lot of others do too. So. Yes, yes. But at first, you know, I worked a regular job. Um, after I, you know, my I put my children in school. We started to work in a regular job at the school, and so it was just more of a hobby. It was just more of this side thing yeah. I did. And then the Lord just really, um, you know. Asked, he asked me to post, start posting my stuff on Facebook, start really, you know, stepping out of my comfort zone. And so for a long time, it was just this little side piece. And, um, and then people would start inviting me to places, invite me to come paint during their conference or whatever. And so there was this huge struggle of like, okay, well, do I not go to work today? Do I go here? Do I, you know, until the Lord just made it you know, very clear. I was to shift and transition. And, you know, my husband was working full time. So it wasn't like, 
I ne- we needed my income fully. So sure. it was, it was an easier transition. Uh, but now my husband's, you know, he works for the art business So we're well, for t- full-time ministry, full-time art uh, business and ministry kind of both. So yeah, there was this tension of, you know, but it was very, the Lord's very gentle. It was a very slow progress yeah. from one to the other. So. I love that. My wife works in our business as well on the mentoring side of things. And um, when I was doing my baskets full time, I always people would say, oh, is Tanya work with you? I said, well, I do baskets and she does deposits. And that's how we've kind of, <laughs> that's kind of how we've worked it out. But now, since, yes. I guess since 2019, she was in education for years. And so since to that, she always did the books and all that kind of stuff in the background. But since in 2019, she quit teaching and came full time into the business. And it's just been it is amazing how the Lord brings us together with our spouses with total, I would have guessed with you guys the same, totally different, different giftings, totally different perspective. And yet exactly what we need personally, and also in business to do the thing that God's called us to do, right? Absolutely. My husband was in retail for 30 some years. So he, he understands business side that, you know, I did not. So I mean, it's just so beautiful. We never knew back when we got married 30 years ago that, that, this was going to be a thing. And, you know, I wasn't even painting back then. So yeah. it's just really cool how the Lord, yeah, he takes our different giftings our different gift mixes and puts them together for something that we never even saw coming. And yeah. so it's really beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So I want to shift a little bit, because I know you've got a, a new book I want to tell everybody about called Unlocked, which I'm like, we should be cousins. Like, this is great. I know. I, I had no idea you had written a book called, oh, they even have that in the title. <laughs> No, it, it's so funny because my friend Roma Waterman has got a, a a book with something about unlock in there as well, and I love it. I just I think it's so neat to me to see what God is doing all over the world in waking up people's hearts and waking up identity and that sort of thing. And I know for me, when I wrote Unlocking the Heart of the Artist, it was kind of like this retrospective look at you know broke, busted, disgusted, going through all this junk and all this healing journey and trying to give artists kind of a way to to navigate that in their own life. I'd love to hear your story with that because I know identity is a huge part of what you have a heart for, not only for everybody, but especially for creatives. So how did that begin to bubble up in inside of you? Well, I, my journey of identity was such a huge shift. It was like the Lord just really worked on me, uh, you know, outside of the church, just really, teaching me on our own, my own, you know, just about who I am and help me discover my own giftings and discover yeah. uh, how he thinks about me and about what I can do for him and what ministry could even look like, you know, because for so long ministry, I thought looked one way. And then uh, I realized that's, you know, not, it's not cookie cutter for everyone. Mm-hmm. Everyone's different and yeah. unique. Um, I started writing uh, Unlocked back in 2007 when I just really you know the Lord had taught me about prophetic art and what it was and what it how to do it and what what are the what what are the benefits of it what can it do for others and um, also what can it do for you and so I wrote it out and and then I just waited I knew it was some it was like a manual it was like a, a handbook but I didn't I knew it wasn't complete. Um, And then back in 2020, the beginning of 2020, I was approached about writing a book. And I'm like, well, I've actually started writing a book. (laughs) Um, I got it right here. I got it right here. And, um, and then the, the publisher had said, well, why don't you consider writing a devotional? And I was like, I, I don't know. I just, I was not, really sure about that but then after I got off the phone I I really took it to the Lord and the Lord just showed downloaded to me this is the missing piece because my Mm -hmm. heart is identity my heart is for people to discover who they are and I I love people to be completely activated in what their giftings are you know it's one thing to learn the information but it's another thing to be able to practically apply it and use it and function in it and so um the Lord showed me to, to write a devotional 30 days of who is God and who am I? Mm. And then with each day have a, a art prompt for the person who's going through it to create something 
out of that prompt? And what is the Lord saying and showing to you about you through art? And it could be any medium, any kind of medium. So that's kind of how it developed. And it just took, you know, a couple of months to write the devotional part. That was pretty quick. And then we just put it all together. How cool. I love that. I love activation. I mean, anything, I think that's why we have gotten into doing courses over the years and all that, because it's one thing to read a book, like you're saying, but it's a whole nother thing to see people activated. You, you mentioned, you know, this, the process that the Lord's kind of led you in creatively over the years and how it has affected you and also can affect others through you. Talk about that kind of prophetic art process, because we know that anytime we're creating with the Holy Spirit, we, we get changed in that encounter, but also the work of our hands gets changed, you know, and, and transformation begins to flow through that as, as well. So I'd love to hear just stories about that because I, I know that you've probably got some incredible ones. Yes. It's, it's just so awesome how, you know, you, you begin to create a piece. And like when I first began, it was like, I just wanted to spend time with the Lord. I just wanted to do something for me. And then as that, as you're creating, you know, the Holy Spirit speaking to you, he's showing you things. He's, he's, um, you know, he's just speaking to you. And then when the piece is complete, he's actually speaking through the piece. So now others are touched because they're seeing it, they're reading it, you know, cause the Lord has me write the prophetic word um, that goes with the, with mm. the, with the piece so that people can see not only what it, what I heard, but they also can hear something for themselves as well. But it, it just, the word itself I've noticed over the years has just impacted so many people because they're like, Oh my gosh, this is what the Lord's been speaking to me. This is how, you know, he's just, you know, he gave me this word. He gave me this picture and you just, you just posted this today. And I just heard this last night or, you know, and it's just so encouraging to hear what the Lord is doing through other people from a piece of artwork that maybe I created several years ago. Yeah. Yeah, It's really amazing. I love that. I would love to hear um, on the, on the practical side, business side, you know, you mentioned that you and your husband are, you know, running a business in addition to ministry and, and that sort of thing. And when, you know, as I'm helping artists, you know, develop their business, put their art, faith and business together and all that sort of thing. One of the, um, I think most difficult segments of, of artists trying to make a living is through quote unquote prophetic art. That is, art that is, um, I mean, how do we want to define this? I just wrote a whole book called Prophetic Art about not defining prophetic art. <laughs> but, but let's just let's just maybe for the sake of conversation say uh, art that has uh, spiritual kingdom, religious metaphor in it, that sort of thing that's overtly Christian, that sort of thing. Um, I would love to just hear your experience and how the Lord's leading you in that because I know for me and for a lot of artists, church is probably has been one of the worst places to try to sell art to believers because there's not been a culture of art buying. There's not been a culture of art making. There's not been a value put on it. A lot of times people think, well, gosh, you, you painted this in church or God gave you this, or how can you charge for it? I mean, you know, just all the baggage that, that goes around with that, that we've all, that could be our other three hour podcast. Yes. Yes. Talk about, so I'd just love to hear your, your experience with that. Cause it seems to me, even the piece behind you, you're going full bore with this is prophetic art. This is from the throne room. This is Jesus speaking to you through this work. So I just love to kind of hear how all that's uh, developing for you and, and what your business looks like from a practical perspective. Yeah, well, you know, I totally <laughs> can relate because, you know, when I first started doing this, you know, you don't want to charge, you don't want to put money on it. I'm like, this is the word of the Lord. How can I charge people for the word of the Lord? I don't want to do that. But, you know, then the Lord really showed me, you know, just like someone writing a book, sure. you know, there's costs involved, you know, you have to, you have to buy the materials. You have to buy the, you know, you spend time doing this, creating the mortgage. <laughs> you need to pay your bills. So, you know, it's part of it. Um, and then, um, you know, so there, there's been throughout time, but I've always tried to keep like when I sell prints. So mm-hmm. right now that's been, you know, I created a website years ago. And at first I would just sell originals and then I started, okay, I need to replicate these because once it's gone, it's gone forever. And so I need to be able to, and I've always wanted to keep the price really small because I want to 
accessible to everyone. To me, it's like, it's not, I don't name it fine art because I don't feel like I want to put this giant price tag on it. Um, it may be worth something, you know, more at some point, but for me, it's more about getting in the hands of people. I want people to have it. I want people to be blessed by it. So I try to keep the prices really uh, low and easy to obtain. So I sell mostly on my website and, um, you know, I, I've never even had, I mean, I worked out of my home for years and well, I still do pay out of my home, but we didn't even have a church building for years. We didn't have our own ministry, yeah. you know, church. And so everything I kept was at home and in my, I used to keep them in closets and the Lord was like one year it was on my birthday and he's like, Amy, you, t- if you, if you don't hang your art and honor your art, no one else will. Come and on. I was like, really? <laughs> And so I had to pull out all my paintings and I had, I, he had me put them floor to ceiling in my living room. Like, ah, it's a <laughs> lot of me, right? overload, <laughs> you know, sensory overload, but it was really, he was teaching me to honor it sure, and the gift and, and the art, because if, because it took me a while to get there, you know what I mean? To even be able to call myself an artist. I was like, well, I've not been trained. I've never, I have no art training. I have no, you know, I, I have no degrees. So how can I call it this or whatever? And so really it was an identity process right. I had to go through, right? Mindset issue number one, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. And so he, he's just taught me over the years. And once I started putting value on it and honoring it myself, others began also to honor it. And so that's kind of been a process too. And, um, and so we, you know, part of my business is traveling and people having me come in and paint or teach and speak or whatever. And I sell my art at tables and, um, you know, the book is a new thing. So we'll see what God does with that. So it's kind of, you know, one of my struggles has been, you know, I'm a minister, uh, not just an artist. I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a minister. Um, and, you know, because people know me more for my art, it's been a hard transition, even there, you know, people knowing, well, I have a voice of actual voice too, besides just a paintbrush, you know, so there's still identity process happening, you know, oh, even sure. now. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And the moment you think you've dealt with it, the Lord will just go, let's just touch this right here. <laughs> <laughs> and all the alarms exactly. go, bing, 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 bing. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've, you know, listeners of the podcast will have heard this before, but I mean, I've about three years ago, I was at, you know, probably the top of my career in my basketry world. And, you know, my work was selling for just all over the place for a lot of money and had a very successful gallery and team and all this kind of stuff. And the Lord gave me a dream. And in the dream, I was shutting down the studio. And it, I, there was a transition going to happen that I was going to be coming fully into this mentoring side of things. And, uh, you know, so it's one thing to say, well, praise God, you know, he's just leading me. I had a meltdown. I mean, I'm like, I had a legit like 18 months of, are you sure? And how is this really going to go? And and bargaining, you know, with, with God and all that kind of stuff. But I think it, it just shows the fact, I mean, even when you've written books on identity and I'm like, if there's one thing I've known for, I think it's probably that the same with you probably. It's like, there's one thing you're known for is probably helping people know who they are in Jesus and get rid of junk and, and all that kind of stuff. And yet, isn't it just the truth? The, the thing that you have the most authority in is usually the thing that you struggle most with because you're always having to, to just throw that thing at the feet of Jesus and continue yeah. to get another layer of wholeness and another layer of healing and um in reality Amen. i mean so i true. hope i'm not the only one you <laughs> no you're absolutely right you're absolutely right well because if we're if we're supposed to be teaching and mentoring and helping others work through this process we've yeah. we've had to walk through it that's right ourselves that's right. <laughs> yeah absolutely. and there are layers and layers you know as we grow in in the lord you know we, we never fully arrive we're we're in process forever so uh, yeah. until we until we transition <laughs> yeah absolutely absolutely <laughs> Well, guys, as you're as you're watching, as you're listening, I want to encourage you grab uh, the book called Unlocked is 30 Days to Discover Your Identity Through Prophetic Art. Uh, Amy, if, if you got a, if you got a copy right there, I, I have a copy. Yes. <laughs> so yes. all you YouTube guys, you can see that if you're on the podcast, you can jump over and, and see the cover. But either way, you can you can click the link 
But um, Amy, just you know, what would if you could if you could may you know ask the Lord for anything and just be like, I would want every person who goes through this book to experience X. What would that one hope be for you as as people grab the book? My hope is that people will discover things in them they didn't know was there. You mm-hmm. know, my my hope is that people will really become more intimate with the father, just, just a place of real intimacy and communion with the Lord, just really fine tune his voice in their life and discover that he is, you know, speaking constantly. He's, he's speaking constantly to you. He wants to speak through you and that there's no limit to how he can speak to you and how he can speak through you. So that's, that is like my favorite thing is for people to recognize God's voice to know that he's talking because he is, you know, it's not, it's not so much, you know, learning to hear his voice, his, his, it's, it's, to me, it's more recognizing his voice because I, he's already speaking. He's speaking to you. If you've received him, he's, he's, he's got you. And, uh, and so, yeah, I I just love the, the growth process. I love seeing people become more who they've always been, you know, and Mm. it's just coming, coming out and getting freedom, real freedom. Yeah. Well, Amy, it's a pleasure to get to know you more and just hear your heart and share what, what God's got on you to do, you and your husband, and just excited about that. Uh, we've got the links for the book and all that in the in the show notes, but where can folks go online to, to follow what you're doing, see your work on Instagram and, and that sort of thing? Where's the best place that they can go? Well, my website is amyrylander.com, and I have a Facebook page, Amy Rylander, and I have uh, my uh Instagram is Amy Rylander Art, so you could find me on there. Just, just search me. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, Amy, thanks. What a pleasure to to share your story, and so glad you could be on the podcast with me today. Thank you so much. It's so nice to connect with you. Thank you for having me.